All right, so let's get started. Uh, we're gonna install the tools that we're gonna need for the remainder of this course. Fortunately, we don't need a lot and everything is free and everything I show you will work regardless, regardless of which operating system you currently have installed. So uh, regardless of whether you're using Windows, Mac, or Linux, everything I show you will be available for those platforms. Uh, the first thing we're gonna need is a web browser. I'm pretty sure you already have one of those installed. Any will do. I would probably recommend that you either use Microsoft Edge or you use uh, Google Chrome. The second tool that we're going to need to install is Node. It is the uh, the JavaScript runtime. It's what will actually execute the code that we write. Uh, and we'll talk about that more in just a moment. And then we're going to need an authoring tool, something where we can actually type the code in. Now, in the past, I've used Notepad to actually demonstrate because I didn't want to like, you know, recommend one tool over the other. But then Microsoft came out with Visual Studio Code. It's available on uh, all three platforms. So it's also available for free. So no matter what you're using, you should be able to download it and follow along. Now you may already have a favorite tool for creating web pages and so forth. Feel free to use that. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything that's so Visual Studio Code specific that it will exclude you. Please follow along no matter what tool you prefer. But let me put in a good plug for Visual Studio Code. I've been using it pretty much as one of my exclusive tools in my full-time job for the last three months. And uh, it's it's really good. So I highly recommend it. Let's get started. We're gonna need Node. And you may already have Node installed. So let's just see if you do or not. Let's go and in Windows, I'm gonna open up a command prompt and I'm gonna type in Node-V. If I had Node installed, it would display the version of Node that I currently have installed. I don't have Node installed on this computer, so I get an error message. That's good. So to begin, we're going to go to node.js, if I can type, there we go, nodejs.org. And again, regardless of which operating system you're using, you should be presented with an opportunity to download either the supported version or the current version, which has like the latest features. You don't need that. Just, just use the LTS version, which is recommended for most users. As long as you're using the version that I'm using or greater, we should always be in sync. Again, we're not gonna use any really advanced features of Node, so this shouldn't really matter much. I'm gonna go ahead and run it, run the installer here. What you see next, depending on uh, which operating system you're using, uh, will um, you may see something a little bit different than what I see on screen, but hopefully you've installed things frequently enough that you can work your way through it. So here we have the Node.js setup wizard, and I'll just walk my way through, agree to the license. I'm going to pick a place on my hard drive to install this. Uh, there are some options. I'm not going to really do much of anything, but I do want to make sure that in Windows that this is added to my path. This will make sure that Node is available in any directory of my hard drive. So when I type in Node V uh, from anywhere uh, in my command prompt, it'll it'll pop up, okay? So just make sure that everything is selected and you'll be fine. It's not that large. Next, I'm gonna have to agree to um, Windows UAC. You may see something different here on the Mac or Linux. I'm going to go ahead and agree to that little security prompt. And it only takes a minute or two to install Node, and then we'll move on. But basically, Node, in a nutshell, is uh, the V8 JavaScript engine that they ripped out of Chrome. They added some tooling around it to support things for like HTTP, working with, with um, requests and responses and with the file system, and they created one of the most robust uh, web server tools that is available today, and many large applications are using Node currently to host their applications. We're not gonna use it for that. We're gonna use it for something much more mundane, which is to really just write out little text messages to a console window as we get started. Then we'll graduate on and use it in web pages much later in this course. All right, so I should have it installed, right? So I come over here and it still says it's not installed. I'm gonna to have to reboot my computer. So let's pause. I'm gonna pause the recording of the video right here. I'm gonna reboot and then when I come back in, we should be able to move on from there. 
All right, so I've rebooted. Let's open up a command prompt, type in node-v, and I can see the version number, so we're successful. The next step is to install Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is different than the full version of Visual Studio, so Visual Studio Community, Professional, or Enterprise. Visual Studio Code is a lighter weight code editor mainly used for web development, but I know people that use it to develop C-sharp applications and other type of, of applications where you can uh, use the, the command line tools to compile your code and things of that nature. That's not something I would ever want to do. It's great for web development, and that's what we're going to use it for, for authoring our JavaScript files and then executing node commands in a built-in little command window, command prompt like we see there. Again, available for all. Uh, operating systems, you just go to code.visualstudio.com. It should be able to detect which operating system you're currently using, and it gives you a download option for that. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and run it in place. Again, Windows UAC prompts me to make sure that I am authorized to install it. We get to the, to the code setup wizard. I'm gonna go ahead and accept the agreement. And we're going to work our way through the defaults. Uh, sure. And you can see that we can also add Visual Studio Code to the path, which will become available after restart. I don't need that necessarily for this course, but hey, you know, it doesn't hurt. In fact, let's go ahead and use it for everything here. That's up to you. You can read those options and choose what you want, but for my purposes, this will work just great. And we'll see throughout this course some of the things that Visual Studio Code will do for us as we're typing our, our code, simple things like, uh, like code coloring and code completion, managing our files, giving us an environment to execute uh, command line tools like the node uh, command line tool. And uh, there are many things like that, IntelliSense, others that will give us the tools to, to hopefully allow us to author our JavaScript code accurately. So let's go ahead and launch it. And let's just do what I call a quick smoke test. And we don't need get for this course. I'm just gonna hit close on that. So what we'll do is uh, go to the Explorer. It's the little icon in the upper left-hand corner here. Let me kind of pull this out and make this a little bit sized a little bit more nicely here. Great. I'm gonna close down the welcome screen. I am gonna click open folder and I'm gonna go on for me, I'm gonna to go to my C drive and I'm gonna create a source folder. Now, depending on your operating system or what your preferences are, you may want to create a folder somewhere else. But create a folder because we're gonna put some, some JavaScript files and later some HTML and CSS files in that folder and we're gonna want a, a folder structure. So right here in the open folder dialog, I'm going to right click and select a new folder. I'm gonna call this source, lowercase s and source, and then select that folder. And now that becomes the working folder that I'm gonna to use to add additional files and, and all the work that we do for this course inside of there. Here, it doesn't really wants me to put git, install git, and I don't wanna do that. What I really wanna do is go to terminal, all right, and depending on which operating system is in, you're installed on, you might see something different here. In Windows, you see PowerShell. It doesn't really matter as long as you get a command prompt. And here I'm gonna type node-v, and I can see that, that's awesome. And then what I wanna do is add a file inside of this folder, this working folder. So I'm gonna click on this little file with a plus symbol in the upper left-hand corner. I'm gonna type in app.js, and it opens up a new file here in the main area with a little JS icon right next to it. And here I'm gonna type all lowercase uh, console.log, hi. I'm gonna to go to the end and hit a semicolon. So let's kind of walk through this. The word console, a period on your keyboard. The word log, L-O-G, and then an opening and closing parenthesis inside of there I want to put an opening single quote mark and a closing single quote mark and then some word I put hi you could put your first name it, it really doesn't matter but what does matter to me at least is that you end it with a semicolon 
Uh, and as you're going to come to learn, writing code is an exercise in precision. If you don't write exactly what I write, there's a chance that you will not get the results that I get. And so you want to double check and make sure there's not extra spaces. You want to double check to make sure that you're using the right characters. Like this is not a comma. It is the period on the keyboard. All right. This is not a curly brace. It is a parenthesis. Uh, this is not a double quote, although that would be acceptable. In this particular situation, I would prefer if you used a single quote, which is on the same key, you just have to hold down the shift key, all right, to get to it, all right? So now I'm gonna use Control S on my keyboard to save, or it might be Command S if you're on the Mac or, or something else on Linux, I don't know, whatever you, you use. But, or you can just go File, Save, all right? Now, watch what happens when I just use the space bar on the keyboard, did you notice See that little symbol there? It went from X to a circle. That means that file has not been saved yet. That change that I made is not saved. So here again, I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut to save it. Then I'll come back down here into the terminal. Now, how can I do this easily? Well, on Windows, the keyboard shortcut is Control and then the back tick. That's usually next to the number one, kind of to the left of it on most keyboards. So the back tick will close and open up that little terminal window at the bottom. And now I can type in node space, and then I want to use the name of this file. So app.js and hit enter on my keyboard. And it should print out that word hi that I have inside of those two single quote marks in console.log. All right. Now we can also shorten this up node space app. We don't have to use the file extension and it will work as well. All right, so assuming that you were able to follow along and you got to this step, then you're ready to move forward and we're ready to get started actually writing some JavaScript. Let's start that process in the next video. We'll see you there. Thanks.